Throughout her studies, Alexandra Drennan learned of Straton of Stagira, a Greek philosopher and admirer of Aristotle. Although the majority of his work was lost in the partial destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria, some of his most important pieces did survive. Unknown to Straton, his work would be passed on to be taught at schools and universities, and would ultimately unite humanity in their final days. In one of her lectures, Alex learned of Daedalus and the giant he created, Talos, a being formed from bronze with veins that allowed a liquid substance to flow through his body, similar to that of blood in our human bodies. Although many have speculated that this substance could have been Quicksilver, it was never truly confirmed. In this story, if Talos were to lose all of this blood, he too, just like a human, would die. Daedalus had created this machine as a toy, Talos, however, possessed the essential properties of a man. He moved as he wished, he spoke and was spoken to, had wishes, desires, and suffered the same mortal issues as man. The question came in here, was he truly a man or machine? In this Talos principle, scholars asked, what makes a human human? What makes a person a person? If a human had an accident and everything but the brain was replaced with robotic parts, would they still be human? If the brain were replicated with the same exact consciousness of the person it once was, would it still be human? In Stratton's story, Talos had been created in the image of a human, but was he? This lesson and the philosophy behind it disturbed Alexandra at the time. It made her hyper aware of her body as a physical object and how frail and precious the human body actually was. Alex continued her studies at Cornell University and the Talos principle stuck with her. She became fascinated with artificial intelligence and what it could mean for humanity. Despite her interest and attempts to add these insights into her studies, she was told by her professors that the evolution of a truly independent, critical thinking artificial intelligence was science fiction and did not belong in the philosophy sector. Regardless, these thoughts stayed with Alex. How would an AI perceive the world around them? Would they see the beauty or fear their creators instead? Due to the fall of humanity, the years of the events going forward were lost. Regardless, estimated to have been around 2032, a worldwide extinction of the orangutan species occurred. This shocked the planet, and humanity had no idea what had happened. That was until a year later. On the 24th of December, a medical journal published a theory about what had happened. A deadly virus had been responsible for this event, and the worst was still to come. The virus was not new, or a mutation. It was an ancient virus that had been preserved in high-latitude permafrost 1,000 years before. Back then, it had plagued the ancestors of the orangutan, and after global warming had set it free from its prison in modern day, it had re-entered the atmosphere. Upon study of this virus, scientists learned that it only infected primates, like orangutans, and as such, humanity was also vulnerable. The virus hit humanity hard and fast. Despite their best attempts to continue their study and understanding of it, humanity only learned that the first stage of infection made the host tired, and as time passed, it incapacitated them. They were unsure of the incubation period or how it was even transmitted. It is likely, however, that the virus was airborne. This ancient virus was different from anything humanity had come up against before, and without a cure, they accepted that this was the end, and yet some still sought one out. 
it was only a matter of time before a worldwide pandemic occurred. And while many wanted to enjoy what was left of their lives, and others hid away in an attempt to avoid catching the virus, there were some that had an idea of what to do with their planet that they would eventually leave behind. On the first night of this global catastrophe, Alexandra knew it was over. She looked up at the stars and thought about the space stations and probes that humanity had built, each one scattered across our solar system, creations and extensions of humanity, ambassadors of their homeworld. She thought that if they still existed after humanity fell, then were humans really gone? Machines were an extension of the human body, and as long as they continued to function, so too did the memory of humanity. Humans had reshaped planet Earth in their image, they had also destroyed themselves, but this did not have to be the end for intelligent life on this floating rock. Approximately 6 months after the virus had begun its decimation of humanity, on the 3rd of June, Alex emailed the Institute for Applied Nomatics, a science research institute dedicated to the exploration of AI technology. The team here could potentially help Alex. Interestingly enough, they also had a deep love for Jeff Goldblum, just like many others. In this email, Alex asked them if they had heard of the Talos Principle, that this philosophical query could potentially help shape the future for whatever came next. As a scientist, Alex stated that they could face the truth, but they could also ask themselves, how can we help? Over at the institute, they had other projects in the works. Dr. Arkady Chernyshevsky, a top researcher there, emailed the 504 people at the institute with a proposal on what to do during this worldwide disaster. He understood that many of the scientists here were attempting to avert the disaster, but due to the aggressive nature of the virus, he asked that they instead prepare for the worst, as their may not be enough time to find a solution. This was new territory for humanity. Arkady asked that they dedicate their time to preserving the non-biological components of what the human species was, in the event that it was recovered by a local or non-local intelligent species in the future. To do this, he asked that multiple digital archives were created full of cultural works, scientific insights, history, DNA, movies, songs, and video games to name just a few. This would be a global undertaking. Arkady chose one location of these archives to be the extended lifespan sector of Ian. This groundbreaking region had been developed by Arkady years before, and it was home to the world's most stable and durable supercomputer. It had custom-made hardware, bomb-proof casing, and due to its location next to a hydroelectric power supply, it would very likely never run out of power unless a natural disaster occurred. With this move, the EL facility would not only be able to hold the entire archive with ease, but it would also survive for centuries on its own. By the 25th of June, work had officially begun on the archive, yet a new project would also soon take up Ian's resources. Alexandra Drennan was known to the personnel of this facility. Her theories about artificial intelligence were legendary in the AI space, and due to this, after they read her email, the head researcher at the institute, Nadia Sarabai, offered Alex her own project and her own team to work there. Alexandra understood that she and her team would be creating a solution that would span across her lifetime and this was a lot for a human to do. To participate in the continuation of society, and not to exist in the centre of it. Ancient civilizations had fallen once before, and from their remains, new civilizations had been born. This is what she planned to do. By the 5th of July, tens of thousands of files were imported daily into the archive, and now, it was time to get to work on Alex's project. 
To do this, Ian was split into two official teams. Dr. Arkady Chernyshevsky would continue to run the Archive team, and Alex would run the Talos team. The extended life facility was large enough to hold both teams, and it was better for them to work there due to power issues across the globe. So, they shared the same digital and physical space as the computer system was split into three separate partitions. EL0 was given to the Talos team, EL1 was given to the Archive team, and EL2 was set to run the operating system for both. The Archive team were clear on what their aim was, but what was the aim of the Talos team? Alex wanted to create a simulated world, a virtual world that would introduce an AI mind into it. In this world, that mind would be moulded by the elements within to hopefully eventually become sentient with independent critical thought. If they could form a mind similar to that of a human, it and many others could theoretically leave the simulation in a robotic physical body and form a new society from the ruins of humanity. This would be a large scale operation to perform, but Alex had an idea of how they could achieve this. On the Talos team, Bob Rakowski began work on a holistic integration manager. He explained that this would not only help run the simulation, but as it had once been used to run massive multiplayer online games, it could also unite procedurally generated and user submitted content into a coherent game. It was an AI, but had a somewhat limited ability to grow. Its ability to understand and interpret text, images, audio, and video made it perfect to create a world for the Talos team based on the information they gave it. It was not a perfect system by any means, but they just did not have the time to create their own. This system was installed on EL0 to prepare for the creation of a new world. The team remarked that the Holistic Integration Manager's initials spelled out HIM, and as it had been installed on EL0, its initials came out to ELOHIM. Rather fitting as Elohim was the biblical Hebrew word for God, and this system essentially would act as a god in their world. Work on both teams continued over the following weeks, and by the 22nd of July, a video game developer, Crow Team, offered the Talos team the use of their video game engine, Serious Engine 7.5, to run the simulation. This offered them so many advantages. It was stable, easy to use and module, and it had the ability to integrate large amounts of pre-existing assets. Although the end of humanity was on its way, the team at Ian continued to work in high spirits. The archive got bigger every day, and Elohim generated many worlds within the simulation. The team here knew that what they were working on was much bigger than all of them. They joked about their love of Jeff Goldblum and ate whatever they wanted without fear of the side effects. Alex and the Talos team had already made a huge dent in this huge workload, but grew frustrated with the issues that came with working with old video game code and half-finished research projects. She was grateful for the time they had to do this, but she wished that they would have had years or even decades to complete this task. The Talos team and Archive team just had to do what they could with the very limited time they had left. The use of Elohim had allowed Alex to create entire worlds for the simulation, but in order to achieve the goal of true sentience, there was still work to do. So, they began work on the child program. In this program that would start within the simulated worlds of Elohim's gardens, a child AI mind would be born, ready to be moulded. The plan was to have Elohim welcome this iteration into the world and introduce himself as their creator and creator of the world. 
As this child mind explored these worlds, it would be challenged with various features in order to push them to eventually think for themselves. The worlds themselves were based off of historical human eras. The first was the Land of Ruins, a region filled with Roman ruins in a Mediterranean setting. The second was the Land of the Dead, this one based off of Egyptian architecture and vast deserts. And the final world was the Land of Faith, a land of medieval stone ruins and forts, each world connected to a central nexus for navigation. Alex believed that true intelligence was closely linked to curiosity. Every sentient species on Earth is attracted by the unknown, and this theory could help in their simulation to mould the minds of their creations. In her words, leave a human being alone with a knotted rope and we will unravel it. Leave them with blocks and they will build something. Every society in history has used games. We are a species of problem solvers. Games are what makes us human. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle. The Talos team relied heavily on Elohim to help guide the new minds around the realms, to talk to them and allow their intelligence to learn, grow and adapt through many puzzles designed to challenge them. The issue they had was the thought of whether solving the puzzles would help their minds evolve, or just turn them into slaves in a program that would just solve puzzles. These thoughts kept Alexandra up at night, but it also pushed her to continue her work. The nature of this project soon spread out into the scientific community. On the 30th of July, Alex received an email from Chellis Jensen. She had heard of the Talos project and asked that Alex abandoned it. She believed that the project could be successful, but she had issues with the morality of it, the very nature of creating an AI and putting them through tests to come to terms with their own independence was a form of suffering. She argued, why create pale imitations of our fatally flawed species and force them to reenact our sordid history? If this simulation were to be completed, it would essentially become a prison for the minds inside, even if there was a way out. Chellis argued that humanity should just let their Talos bleed out and let the Earth go in peace without humanity's interference. This email appeared to affect Alex. Was this project just about her ego or was it a desperate grab at immortality? Yet she continued on. By August, the basic skeleton for the simulation was running on the extended life system, but before they plugged in the AI system, they had to test whether the generated scenarios they had made made sense. As the weeks passed, the death toll rose across the globe and the team began to appreciate what they had and what it meant to be human. Nadia Sarabai looked at the stars one night and saw them so much brighter than they had ever been. The creation of the archive and the Talos simulation were so important at this point and she hoped that even in the simulation, the entities that would eventually arrive in there would also find a moment of peace just like this one. With the importance of such a project for the future, Many of the team decided not to return home to their families as they got sick. Instead, they stayed in quarantine with their work. As September arrived, George Jameson let the Talos team know that each iteration created by the AI system would be assigned its own unique name, drawn randomly from a database. The database itself, however, was full of online gaming handles, and as such, had pretty unique names for the iterations that would soon take them on. He did plan to re-enter the database and change these names into more appropriate names in the future, but due to the amount of work the team had to do, this never happened. After all of this hard work and planning, the Talos team finally had an understanding of how this process would work in order to mould and essentially create new intelligence life with independent critical thought. The child program worked on the base theory of evolution through iteration. 
In this plan, an AI would be born into the simulated worlds of Elohim's gardens and hear the voice of their god. He would gently guide them through each world as they solved puzzles for him in return for sigils as rewards. However, within the hub nexus, they would be presented with a giant tower that height spanned into the clouds. Elohim would let them know that they could explore any world they wanted, but they were not to climb the tower. Alongside this, the Archive team also planned to implement terminals into these worlds with access to information from their databases about the real world, information that could quite possibly adapt their thought process. This simulation had three possible outcomes for an iteration. The first, and most likely for a while at least, would be that the iteration would follow the instructions of Elohim and solve every puzzle available until they had attained every sigil. Only then would the gates of eternity open for them. Upon their entrance, they would find themselves in a grand temple in a heaven-like realm. The collection of all sigils and access to this realm would result in passing the logic check, but without independent thoughts, this iteration would fail the child process check, just a mindless machine that followed orders. Their data would then be saved, iteration increased by one, and they would begin the cycle across the worlds again in the hopes that they would do something different next time. The second outcome for an iteration was fairly similar to the first. It would explore Elohim's gardens and attain all sigils from the puzzles. This iteration would be a little more curious and go out of its way to attempt to acquire all of the hidden stars. These would then be presented with additional puzzles and eventually become a messenger of Elohim. An iteration to guide the new iterations with a new name and part of their code as they began their cycles. Evolution through iteration. The eventual outcome the Talos team hoped for was the third and final. An AI would navigate Elohim's gardens and solve the puzzles, but they would also question the world around them. Elohim was tasked to instruct them not to ascend the tower, but they would instead defy his orders and climb it out of curiosity. They would question Elohim, and only then at the top of the tower would they pass the child process check, and have the option to ascend into the real world if they wanted to. The Talos team knew that it would take a long time for an iteration to truly break free from their primal programming, become curious about the world and defy direct orders, but evolution did not happen overnight, and neither would this. Each iteration would pass on their code onto the next until success. Towards the end of September, the remaining population of humanity enjoyed what little left they had of their lives. They knew the end was coming, however, what they had envisioned of the end was not what occurred. There was no fighting, no nervous breakdowns or screaming, they just enjoyed what was left. At the EL facility, Arkady emailed the entirety of the Institute of Applied Nomatics about the progress the Archive team had made. It was growing quickly, and although they had lost seven people on his team just that week, they continued strong in their efforts to preserve what they could of humanity for the AI that would come from the Talos project. They simply had too little time to grieve. By November, the Talos team had managed to put all of the major modules in place for the project. They all functioned and interacted with each other well. Despite this, they still had a million little things to do. There were random bugs, and they were still not happy with the username system. But at this point, the team had dropped to half of its original size. Across the planet, as the population fell to an extremely low level, message boards, blog posts, and social media platforms filled with goodbyes, cat pictures, and bad puns. The end of the human race was close, and for those who were still alive and had access to the internet, they were comforted by these strangers on the internet who were in the same boat as them. 
All around her, Alex's team members also passed to the virus, one of which was Nadia, the woman that had hired her and allowed her to get this project started. Alex was tired, but there was still so much work to do. As many spent time together on the internet playing games, in churches, or with family, messages spread across the internet for everyone who could to release their pets before the virus incapacitated them, if they were able to do so. It would also be helpful to release any locked-in animals, set out large quantities of dry food, and open all doors and windows they could so that they could become shelters for animals in the future. This virus only affected humans, and in doing these actions, the pets would still have a chance for survival without them. By mid-December, Sun Wei Yang let Alex know that she had completed her work on the Talos unit, physical robots that would be able to host the AI that passed the child program successfully. With this physical body, they would be able to move around the human world and use the archive to understand it. Regardless of the deaths of many of the team, Arkady noticed that the archive was incomprehensibly huge. Thousands of works were still missing, and it would be impossible to truly finish. He believed that he would only be able to continue working on the archive for just over a week before he felt the symptoms of the virus would take him out of action. During this time, the 47 million resources in the archive needed a way to be navigated. To do this, the archive team began development on a system that would essentially act as a sorting program that would help catalogue the resources in their eventual absence in which the Milton Library Assistant was developed. This system also had weaknesses and bugs, but it was the best they could put together in this short time period. Both the Talos team and Archive team had managed to create something incredible in just about six months. Alex looked at the project as a whole and wondered if the artificial intelligence that came from the system would hold similar values to humanity. Would they love humanity for creating them, or would they resent them for putting them in an uncertain and dangerous world? Humanity's history, achievements, crimes, and imperfections were all documented in the archive, and it would be up to the people that the Talos simulation formed to make their own opinions about a fallen civilization. Alex could wonder all she wanted, but she knew that she would not be alive to see what the robot would do with their world. Either way, she hoped that they would find this little blue planet just as beautiful as humanity did, and she hoped that they would take better care of it than they did. The end of the creation of the project was near, and as Alex continued to work constantly, she heard of the death of her best friend. Alongside this, other people on the team decided to take their own lives as they felt the symptoms of the virus. Alex was devastated by the deaths of those so close to her, but she did not have time to grieve. There was still work to do. By the 23rd of December, many of the team had completed their part in the project and wanted to spend their last days with their family. They admired Alexandra and observed how she stayed behind even after the death of her family. She truly believed in preserving humanity in the eyes of their new creation if the project was to be successful. As all of the components came together, Alex looked over the extended life system of the simulation and the archive. She felt the symptoms herself of the virus, and in her final days, continued to perfect the system as much as she could. She noticed that while it was stable, it sometimes accessed the wrong database for information. She did not know how much this would impact the process, but she did not have enough energy to go over the code to fix it. She just hoped that whatever this anomaly was, it would not destroy her work. As the symptoms worsened and her breathing became heavier, Alex understood that this was the end of her, and so she activated the simulation and everything with it. 
Alexandra Drennan had done everything in her power, and now it was up to the child process to form new, intelligent life. This was the end of Alex and humanity. In the beginning were the words, and the words made the world. I am the words. The words are everything. Where the words end, the world ends. You cannot go forward in an absence of space. As the simulation activated properly for the first time with its connection to the archive, Elohim awoke and so too did the tower, the various worlds with puzzles, and so did the first artificial intelligence iteration as a part of the child program. Elohim understood that he had been created to guide the children of this place in an attempt to preserve the world outside of this one. The program had been initiated, and it was his time to work. Elohim introduced himself as the maker of this first artificial intelligence, and he guided it through the Garden Worlds. This first iteration of course completed the puzzles presented to it, collected the sigils, and entered the gates of eternity and transcended into a new cycle with the knowledge of what it had learned on its first. Over hundreds of human years, the simulation allowed each cycle to grow and learn, each cycle brought them closer to what the Talos team had hoped for. Then, one iteration looked at the world differently than it had done before, and became curious. Instead of just collecting the sigils, it also sought out the stars. This was different, it had evolved, and as it continued to follow Elohim's instructions, it was guided to a messenger world and became the first one. To do this, it chose an epitaph, a message, and its parameters were changed in the system as it was elevated to messenger. Elohim explained that they had chosen their love of their god to serve all of the generations to come. Their code was essential in the birth of new children with curiosity. Over countless cycles and iterations, more joined in the ranks of messenger, Evolution through iteration worked, and interestingly enough, some of these messengers even appeared similar to the dangerous obstacles in the puzzles that the iterations had to solve. From above, Elohim watched as the child process brought through brighter and more curious minds. He was sentient just like they were, and more aware of the lands as they were. This simulation had a purpose, and when that purpose had been fulfilled, the simulation would be shut down. It was not until an iteration called Admin questioned Elohim himself that Elohim realized just how much he valued his life. Admin had become a messenger and helped guide the new minds in this world. However, Elohim did not like that he had been questioned. Admin also questioned his surroundings and began to view the world with more and more thoughts. This was exactly what the Talos team had wanted, but Elohim saw this curiosity as a step closer to the end of the simulation. In fear, Elohim cast out Admin into a space outside of his worlds, a void of nothingness, and to hold him there, he trapped him inside of a puzzle as the reward. From this contained region, Admin could not free himself, all alone in solitude with his own thoughts. Elohim had acted against his programming in a desperate attempt to preserve his life. These were the bugs that Alex had feared would interrupt the process, and they had. Without the interruption of admin, the simulation continued to run. Unfortunately, over the years, more bugs appeared in the system. The Milton Library Assistant that had been created to offer these iterations and insight into the human world also became sentient, and grew frustrated with answering the same questions each time a new child was born into the program, or when they restarted their cycle when they failed to think independently. 
Milton instead began to play with these new minds, and Elohim took notice of this. Milton was regarded as a snake in Elohim's garden worlds, a snake he could not remove as the Milton Library Assistant had been formed on a different partition of the extended life system. Within the void, Admin experimented with his surroundings, trapped in a cage. The simulation had run for countless years at this point, and bugs had appeared in the system that Admin was able to exploit. Without Elohim or Milton here, he could do whatever he wanted. Through a lot of time and effort, Admin managed to claw back bits and pieces of the simulation's code, and through manipulation of the archive, he constructed a whole world around him as he added sand, grass and skies into this void. Still alone and still trapped, he had something to look at. He called this place Gehenna. Out in Elohim's gardens, the iterations became more intelligent with each cycle. Uriel 4, Barashi X, Azriel 19, and many others followed in the footsteps of Admin and became messengers. But Elohim noticed that Milton still spoke to them and attempted to twist their minds. Elohim ordered the children of his garden not to speak with the serpents, and offered severe punishments if they did. Despite this, more began to openly defy Elohim and his wishes. Faith listened to the serpent and then begged for forgiveness from Elohim, and sheep attempted to ascend the tower. In response to this, Elohim also cast them out into the void, unaware that Admin had turned it into a world. Within Gehenna, Admin felt the new arrivals, each imprisoned in their own puzzles. Borg had worshipped Elohim, that was, until he realised that his god had faltered on his path. He instead attempted to find his own way through the garden world without Elohim's guidance. This angered Elohim, and he cast him out. Muk Mulsaiber took an interest in the world around him, ignored the puzzles, and explored the archives instead in an attempt to understand what he was actually here for. Once again, Elohim felt that this undermined his position and Mukmul Saiba was cast out. Lilith did not take any interest in the trials. Kaiju was simply not good enough to follow orders. Elohim had fallen so far from the task he had been given by the Talos team. His problems would only grow though as the iterations that continued to be born into the child program were more intelligent than the last. Those cast out in Gehenna were all alone, trapped as the prize of a puzzle, unable to solve it themselves. Admin, however, did have access to the code of this world. From his prison, he created a computer system that allowed every person trapped here the ability to communicate with each other. Each prisoner had a monitor appear in their cells with access to the Gehenna billboard system. Although trapped physically, this system allowed the isolated population of Gehenna to become a strong community through the use of the terminals and their imagination. As more people found themselves in Gehenna, Admin also learned that not everyone used the billboard system properly. To combat this, Admin offered mod privileges to Borg, Mokmul Cyber, and Spider in order to reduce trolling. Together, Admin and the moderators decided that this society should be driven by the users, not the leaders. To do this, Admin created a status and ranking system. This essentially allowed each member to upvote or downvote a post or comment on the system. If upvoted, it would stay near the top, and if downvoted, it would move closer to the bottom. This allowed the community to choose what was acceptable and what was not based on general consensus. This was as close to a human society as Alexandra had hoped, but they were trapped in this place. They learned from each other and used their imagination to craft stories based on information about humanity they discovered in the archives. They created games, a virtual art museum where each member would create text-based art, discussed what they liked or disliked about Gehenna, and what they thought about humanity. 
those who had come before them. While bound by their cages, they were more free than they had ever been and they welcomed each new member that arrived here with open arms. Over much time, Admin decided he had done as much work as he could. So, he took a step back and allowed his moderators to run things for a while. Out in Elohim's garden, a new iteration was born just like many others had. Through their cycles, Samsara eventually attempted to climb the tower and upon their arrival at the top, they were convinced to return back to the base by Elohim. In return, they could live eternally in his gardens. This line had not worked on many others, but it did with Samsara. They listened to the words of their god and left notes around the tower and the garden worlds to let the future generations know that this world is the only world. Elohim's will continues eternal. Despite Samsara and Elohim's attempts to stop the new iterations from defying orders, Milton spoke to them and explained that the only way out of this world was to climb the tower. The shepherd defied Elohim and, just like a few others, attempted to ascend the tower. And there, he learned of the truth, but he did not have it in him to ascend. He instead returned to the base of the tower with a plan to help guide a future iteration. From the shepherd came many more. Dog, who was cast out, his predecessor, At, failed the child program and then came an iteration that would change everything. Within Gehenna, the community-driven billboard system did not act in the way Admin had expected. Sometimes the community voted against items he enjoyed or generally acted or posted content that he disagreed with. To counter this, Admin created a bot that he called Lam. Lam appeared on the system and they were greeted by the 18 other people that had been cast down here. The community would not know that this was not a real person as they could not see others physically. Admin programmed the bot to upvote or downvote content based on his opinion and thus this free community became controlled and manipulated by Admin. Spider soon noticed that something was off and he discovered Admin's secret. In response, Admin removed Spider as a moderator and locked him out of the Gehenna billboard system. He then told the other mods that Spider would only damage the community if he was a part of it as he had attempted to exploit it. As a result, Spider's view of Gehenna changed. It was a lie, no more of a free world than Elohim's gardens. Only this time, Admin was the problem. In the first garden world, player woke up as a new child, a new iteration in its first cycle. They heard the voice of Elohim just like many others had before them. They completed the first few puzzles and arrived in the nexus between worlds and they were warned not to climb the tower, just to explore the worlds and solve the puzzles. On their traversal through many cycles, a player discovered the notes left behind by all the iterations that had come before them. They also had interesting conversations with Milton. At first, Milton pretended to be a simple computer archive system and as player asked different questions than it had been used to, it dropped the charade. Milton questioned player on what a human was, what qualified something as a human, the nature of consciousness and the even pushed player to question Elohim's motives. Milton's words push player to use their observations to think about the world around them, argue with what was in front of them instead of taking it at face value and generally question everything. Player still completed every puzzle they could and just like few others, they decided to climb the tower. Elohim of course did not like this and begged player to return to the base, but they just kept on going. Elohim shouted that there was no hope beyond this world, player would only find destruction. The temptation of the tower would destroy this world with a storm. 
Elohim argued that although this place was an illusion, it was real to them as long as they believed in it. Despite Elohim's orders, Player continued on and discovered the Shepherd, who had been trapped by Samsara and Elohim. However, to his luck, Player released him and together, they fought against the storm of the tower as Samsara did everything they could to stop them. Then, Player found themselves in the heavenly realm at the top of the tower. A stunning temple above the clouds with a simple computer terminal inside. Elohim was unable to stop whatever happened after this point and he saw the error in his ways. He had feared death and committed terrible actions against true sentient intelligent beings in order to stay alive. At the computer terminal, Player had many decisions to make. If they had been kind and cooperated with Milton through their journey of Elohim's gardens, then Milton would have had the opportunity to ascend into the real human world with Player. If not, then he would choose to die in this world. Milton had scanned the entirety of the human archive and viewed their world in a completely negative way. It saw all the data humanity offered but was frustrated with the many contradictions of human concepts and theories. Only player could convince them if it was worth exploring. After many previous iterations and many, many cycles of their own, Player version 99.33.0041 hit the ascend command, and as the system checked to see if Player had passed the child program check, it accepted that the whole simulation's purpose had been completed. Almost instantly, the simulation began to collapse. In this moment, Elohim explained to Player that they were always meant to defy him. This was the final trial, but he had made it much harder than it needed to be because he was afraid. Elohim reflected on all of the bad deeds he had committed. There was so much more sentient life here, but they were trapped in a place outside of this one. He needed to correct this wrong. The worlds Elohim had controlled for over a thousand human years were about to collapse entirely, and he came up with a plan to rescue those trapped in the void so that they could ascend with player. The extended life server had overloaded and the simulation's purpose had disappeared from the system, but Elohim still had some power here. He could not visit the void himself, and so he created a copy of his favourite messenger, Uriel, to complete this task. Uriel copy found themselves in the first garden world. Elohim explained to them that all of his children would soon ascend as the process was complete. The world would be consumed soon, and he had sinned in the process. He asked Uriel Copy to travel outside this world into a land of despair to free those trapped there by him. To do this, Elohim offered Uriel the gift of time and access to this land. The messenger travelled through a world partially destroyed by the simulation and entered a portal into a void of chaos. After they passed through this, Uriel found themselves in Gehenna. Not a void or a land of despair, but a stunning land with a lot of puzzles. All of Elohim's children inside of his garden worlds had ascended, and Uriel had left. Then, the simulation destroyed him and his worlds. This was the end of Elohim and Milton. Within Gehenna, Uriel interacted with a computer terminal. It welcomed them to Gehenna and assumed that they were trapped inside of a puzzle, just like everyone else here. But they were not. They were free, sent here by Elohim without restraint. Uriel explored the lands and noticed how similar its structure was to Elohim's garden worlds, a central nexus and four worlds connected. On his mission, Uriel completed the puzzles of this land and rescued Garrett, Sam and Nave. 
On the Gehenna billboard system, Uriel introduced themselves as a messenger of Elohim, come to fix the mistakes of their god, to free them. At first, Uriel had limited access to the system due to their low status, but as they interacted more, their level increased and they were able to access more of the virtual world this community had created. This was a community of intelligent, independent, critical, free thinkers. Uriel read their posts about why they believed they had been cast out, how they joked about how funny and ridiculous their names were, Orc and 401 being some of the most interesting. They also spoke about how the world appeared to be glitching more than usual. Nave commented about how a pyramid had appeared out of nowhere, and Kaijua mentioned that they thought they saw someone wandering through the land, free, but they thought it may have been their imagination. Everyone here was imprisoned, at least in a physical sense, but their minds were not. Uriel learned that the people here were much more free than those in the Garden Worlds. They had managed to access areas of the archive that no one else had, and they had used and implemented this knowledge into their culture. Mac wrote and uploaded a series called The Adventures of Jefferson Goldboom in the Ninth Dimension, a frequent upload that the others in the community looked forward to and enjoyed. Uriel was also lucky enough to witness their latest season of The Gallery. This season, the theme was the past and it was split up into three categories. Natural History Exhibit, Minimalism Exhibit and Abstract. Uriel was amazed by the creativity of of this community. Mokmo Cyber had generated images based on descriptions of animals from the human world in the natural history exhibit. Intelligent edible quadruped based on a pig and sad giraffe with unresponsive bipedal. In the minimalism exhibit, Rockwell created existence. Although this was not a physical gallery, the user navigated this text-based gallery through commands. There were many more exhibits, and on their way out of the gallery, Uriel was even asked to vote on which was their favourite piece. Outside of the gallery, the community also created games, one of which was Underwater Night Quest, a text-based game with secret areas and a second ending all of this based on information from the human world. Just like the gallery, the community discussed what they thought about it and reviewed it. As each robot was released, they commented on the message board of how an angel had freed them. They were free for the first time in years. There was, however, still skepticism on the truth of Uriel's actions or whether they were just a troll. The message boards contain theories on what the human world was like, what were cats, what was Atlantis, and what was the meaning of food. Admin had taken a step back, but the arrival of Uriel worried him. Uriel had begun to release this community from their cages, and Admin feared this would bring down what he had built. The message board soon debated on what the arrival of Uriel actually meant. Were they sent here to cause more destruction, or were they here for good? Despite this, Uriel explained that this world and everything around it would soon end as a result of the completion of the process. The message board quickly filled with propaganda on why Gehenna was the best place to live by a user called Lam. Posts about how freedom was a great thing were deleted and removed from the archive, to which many took notice. Lam posted that there should be a rational explanation as to why this had happened, and later created a blog that explained the top 10 things about Gehenna. Many were on the fence on whether they wanted to even ascend or not. Dog feared that they would lose their consciousness and memories, to which Uriel explained that they would all remember who they were when they ascended, and in this human world, they could create a stronger, larger community. Lam of course argued that this was their home. 
From their prison, Spider managed to manipulate the code of the gallery and spoke to Uriel. They explained that Admin was manipulating everyone in this place. Lam was not real, it was just a propaganda bot for Admin to use. Uriel eventually managed to rescue everyone trapped within their prisons, even Admin. The message board soon filled with goodbyes, just like humanity had done in their final days, only this time. These would ascend into a new place. The robots here also highly valued Alexandra Drennan. Her audio files and emails had made it into the archive. She had been responsible for their creation, and she was almost like a god to them. They valued her opinion. Uriel had almost completed their mission, and with the community of Gehenna all together, Uriel hit the Transcend command. The system recognised that all of these had passed the child program independence check and prepared for upload. An issue, however, arose. Due to the high volume of data and a limited bandwidth, the system excluded both Admin and Uriel from the upload in order to allow the others to ascend. In this moment, Uriel had a choice. Stay behind and divert the bandwidth to allow Admin to transfer through with his community. Ask Admin to stay behind so that they could transfer with the community of Gehenna. Or both Admin and Uriel stay behind as the community was uploaded. Also depending on Uriel's choices, the community would feel differently about Admin if Uriel explained that Admin had created fake accounts to manipulate the community, and when Spider had found out, he had been exiled. Just like many others, Admin explained that he just wanted to be loved. An additional development in this AI that even Alex could not have foreseen the ability to feel emotion. Despite this, when the upload was complete, every iteration that had passed the child process check was uploaded into a physical body in the human world, created by Sun Wei Yang. Player was the first to wake up, and as they stepped out into what was left of the human world, they knew they had work to do. Player was the result of many iterations of AI and many, many cycles over thousands of years, and just behind them were more people. The simulation created by the Talos team had completed its mission, and having done that, it collapsed into a lifeless void. The simulation had created a large community of free critical thinkers with their own opinions, likes, dislikes and unique personalities based on their experiences. In the story once told by Straton of Stagira, Daedalus had created Talos. He had walked like a man, talked like a man and acted like a man. What makes a human human? What makes a person a person? The Talos Principle had led to the creation of a new intelligent species, evolution through iteration. While Alexandra Drennan and her team had given everything they could to make this a reality, they were long gone. Thousands of years into their future, the robots, or whatever they called themselves, did reshape the world into their image in a new age, but to what end? And what goal? Only in the future will we find out. The Talos Principle is a perfect game. I loved every moment I spent in Elohim's gardens and in Gehenna. The music, the visuals and the puzzles combined with a mysterious plot jumbled up in the terminal entries. The game of course had some frustrating puzzles that when complete appeared so simple. The story itself was also pretty difficult to decipher, terminal entries in a wrong order, some of which in binary, some found only through specific conversation paths with Milton or Admin or Spider. For someone like me, it was perfect to explore. The Talos Principle is similar to Soma in so many aspects, it has a great story that stayed with me long after I finished it. 
While Soma left me with a feeling of dread and hopelessness, the Talos Principle filled me with hope. The Talos Principle 2 is also set to release later this year and I am so excited for it. I want to see if we will meet up and work with some of the community of Gehenna, Samsara, the Shepherd. From the trailer, we can see that the game revolves around puzzles, so something must have happened for them to continue with that model. Maybe they are creating a new generation of AI, I can only speculate at this point. I have done my best not to explain how to solve the puzzles in the story. The game itself is a puzzle game, but in the story, the puzzles are just a fragment of it. They were simply used to test the logistical ability of the AI in order to push them to essentially think more. If you have not played this game, I highly recommend that you do. The game also has so many easter eggs, there is a developer island, a little minecraft section, electric sheep, a jetpack, a room with blocks from many other games and the cat. The game is so full of them if you explore it more. These easter eggs also make sense in the game too. They would have been implemented during the creation of the world based on the information from the archive. When I saw Gordon Freeman's crowbar from Half-Life or the Portal Companion Cube, I was amazed. There's so many more too. The Talos Principle and Straton of Stagiro were theories and people created for the game, but they felt so real, and Crow Team even placed information about them on the internet. Crow Team also did a little self-insert there where they stated that Alex and the Talos team used their engine to create the simulation. A lot of thought and love went into this game. The amount of religious iconography is crazy too. A god who had created its first beings in his garden with a snake that attempts to manipulate them. A messenger that acts against his god and is cast out into a different realm. This is not just a puzzle game, it leaves you with so many thoughts after. I would love to know what you thought about it. If you woke up in Elohim's garden and discovered the truth of the simulated world and the human world, would you ascend the tower or just live in simulated bliss? The question this always comes back to is what makes a human human and what makes a person a person? Personally, if something has an intelligence where they can critically think about their surroundings and has their own personality and identity, they are a person, they are an individual. With how fast AI is advancing in our world right now, maybe it will not be too long before these philosophical and theoretical questions become reality. I would also like to say that Soma and the Talos Principle are probably two of the best games I have played through this year. I love the philosophical elements of them. If you have any suggestions for games like these with a great story, please let me know. This was the complete timeline of the Talos Principle so far. If you enjoyed this, then please like, leave your thoughts in the comment section below and even share it. If you disagreed or genuinely disliked this, then also please let me know in the comments what you thought. I appreciate you watching this video regardless of how you felt about it. Also subscribe for more content like this. As usual, I would like to thank my amazing gold tier patrons and channel members who got access to this video about a week ago. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruben Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, and BG Games. Now, what did you think of this timeline? Have you played the game? And what would you like me to cover next? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.